Das hier ist jetzt die Maschine, die auf 10 Kilowatt ausgerüstet ist. Willkommen in einer neuen Ära der Energieerzeugung. Die Erfindung des rotierenden Permanentmagnetmotors durch Herrn Muamir Yildiz wird die weltweite Energieerzeugung revolutionieren und zu einem Paradigmenwechsel im Energiebereich führen, welcher die Welt vor dem Klimawandel retten wird, indem er die Verbrennung fossiler Brennstoffe überflüssig macht. Yildiz Magnetmotoren erzeugen keine Emissionen und verbrauchen keinen Kraftstoff. Diese revolutionäre Entdeckung einer neuen sauberen Energiequelle steht in einer Reihe mit der Entdeckung der Dampfmaschine der Elektrizität und des Atoms. Die Weltwirtschaft wird stark von der Nutzung und den daraus resultierenden Auswirkungen dieser neuen Energiequelle profitieren. Yildiz Permanentmagnetmotoren können Arbeit billiger als jeder andere Motor leisten. Muamir Yildiz Herr Muamir Yildiz, geboren 1958 in Afyon in der Türkei, erfand 1978 seinen ersten rotierenden Magnetmotor. 2004 erhielt Herr Yildiz für seinen Magnetmotor vom TÜV Hamburg ein Betriebstauglichkeitsgutachten. Die in der Schweiz ansässige World Intellectual Property Organization hat das Patentdokument ebenfalls genehmigt. Seit 2005 verifiziert Herr Yildiz seine Motoren bei Associate Professor Jorge Elduate für Elektromechanik und Leistungselektronik an der Technischen Universität Eindhoven in den Niederlanden. 2009 patentierte Herr Yildiz seine Erfindung und besitzt das geistige Eigentum für Drehmagnetmotoren. 2010 demonstrierte Herr Yildiz seinen Magnetmotor an der Technischen Universität Delft in den Niederlanden. 2013 stellte Herr Yildiz den Yildiz-Motor auf der Inventors Expo im PAL Expo in der Schweiz und auf der Expo Innovation Turkey aus. 2014 gründete Herr Yildiz sein Unternehmen HMSB als Aktiengesellschaft. Im Jahr 2017 erhielt HMSB ein Industrial Registration Certificate. Herr Yildiz ist derzeit Vorstandsvorsitzender von HMSB. Die Technologie der Yildiz-Motor, auch bekannt als A Magnetic Monopole Device, ist ein rotierender Permanentmagnetmotor, welche die patentierte Erfindung von Herr Muamir Yildiz ist. Der Motor wird nur durch die Anordnung von Permanentmagneten innerhalb des Motors angetrieben. Yildiz-Motoren erzeugen keine Emissionen und verbrauchen keinen Kraftstoff. Er ist in seiner einfachsten Form ein Gerät, das aus einem gefrästen Aluminiumstator und einem Rotor besteht, die durch Lager miteinander verbunden sind. Die leistungsstarken Permanentmagnete sind sowohl im Stator als auch im Rotor eingebettet und dabei so positioniert, dass sich der Rotor kontinuierlich dreht und ein nützliches Drehmoment erzeugt. Was den Yildiz Magnetmotor einzigartig macht, ist, dass beim Betrieb des Motors die Wechselwirkung von Magnetfeldern innerhalb des Motors gleichzeitig und kontinuierlich die internen Permanentmagnete magnetisiert. Folglich behalten die Permanentmagnete des Yildiz Motors ihre Stärke, sodass die Motoren theoretisch jahrhundertelang betrieben werden können. Das von einem Yildiz Magnetmotor erzeugte Drehmoment kann zur Bereitstellung mechanischer Leistung verwendet oder alternativ mit einer Lichtmaschine zur Stromerzeugung kombiniert werden. Muamir Yildiz, der Erfinder, lud am 17. Dezember 2022 erneut Ingenieure, Vertreter der Industrie und Investoren nach Izmir in die Türkei ein, um die gesamte Entwicklung seiner Motoren zu präsentieren. Inge und Adolf Schneider, selbst Forscher und Buchautor für neue Energietechnologien mit eigenem Verlag, dem Jupiter Verlag in der Schweiz, haben an der Demonstration teilgenommen und gefilmt. Schon einmal im Jahre 2008 ließen sie sich in Stein bei Nürnberg den Motor von Muamir Yildiz vorführen und haben ausführlich im Netjournal berichtet. Das überaus beliebte Netjournal erscheint zweimonatlich als verlagseigene Fachzeitschrift des Jupiter Verlages mit Themen rund um neue Energietechnologien jenseits des Mainstreams. In der Ausgabe Januar, Februar im Februar 2023 wird wieder ausführlich von der Türkei-Reise zum Yildiz-Treffen berichtet. Das Ehepaar Schneider geht davon aus, dass die Markteinführung des Motors nahe sein könnte, da sich Investoren für neue Termine mit dem Erfinder verbunden mit ausgiebigen Messungen verabredet hatten. Heute sehen Sie exklusiv bei geetanders.de die neuesten Filmaufnahmen. So, hier sieht man die ersten Magnetmotoren vom Beginn an und wie er dann Muhammad Yildiz im Laufe der Jahre die Motoren weiterentwickelt hat und das ist ein ganzes Museum äh, mit verschiedensten Konstruktionen 
Ich mache hier noch einige Nahaufnahmen. Ein Teil dieser Magnetmotoren wurde auch ausgestellt in Stein in Nürnberg im Jahr 2008, wo wir Muamir besucht hatten, wo er auch eine Demonstration gemacht hat von einem größeren Magnetmotor, der etwa 250 Watt geleistet hat. Und dieser Motor, den werden wir nachher sehen, hat er auch auf der Erfindermesse in Genf 2013 ausgestellt. Und Jorge Duarte hatte auch die Möglichkeit, die Leistung dieses Motors zu messen und die betrug 250 Watt mechanisch. Man sieht hier eine Vielfalt von Konstruktionen, das heißt, er hat wahrscheinlich nach der Methode Try and Error sich sukzessive an eine optimale Konstruktion hingetastet. Hier sieht man, dass er bei einer Erfinderausstellung ISIF 16 in Istanbul eine Medaille bekommen hat. Eine Goldmedaille. Hier sieht man auch kleinere mit Motoren. Also die Technologie ist skalierbar, von klein bis groß. Wir haben gerade erfahren, dass die große Maschine, die wir nachher sehen, die in Belluno ausgestellt wurde für eine Nennleistung von 10 Kilowatt konzipiert ist. Wir werden sie nachher noch sehen. Das sind jetzt schon die größeren Maschinen. Wie man sieht, haben wir jeweils Rotoren, die parallel geschaltet sind. Wie wir hier sehen, sind die Magnete eingelassen in entsprechender Vertiefungen von Aluminiumringen. Und jetzt kommen wir zu der Maschine, die eine Leistung von 250 Watt macht. Das ist genau die gleiche Maschine, die wir am 4. Juli 2008 in Stein in Nürnberg gesehen haben und wo es auch einen ausführlichen Bericht im Netzjournal gibt. Duarte'den sorabilirsiniz. Hepinize tekrar tekrar hoş geldiniz diyorum. Sağ olun diyorum. Please let me introduce myself. This was a very long way to arrive here today. Um, 
I was born in uh, Brazil. My name is George Duarte, where I did studies uh, engineer, electrical engineering up to the master level, work with uh, power systems, big machines, um, generators and so on, distribution of electricity. Then uh, in, I moved, after the master, I moved from Brazil to France to do my doctoral uh, research in small machines, control, digital control, in small machines. It was the beginning time of these things. After this, I, after my doctoral in France, I moved to the Netherlands, um, where I've been working at the University of Andover for 35 years, and I just got the privileged age of being retired just a few months ago. Nice freedom. <laughs> uh, okay, and today I'm here as a messenger of uh, good news. Very good news. I think low, slowly you're going to realize how important is this show, let's put it like that, this demonstration. Uh, I can, I don't know if there has been something like that up to now. An inventor put in public all his, histor his, his ideas. And uh, I'm going to talk then um, about an engine for unfolding energy from space, um, as invented by Mr. Manoamer B. Well, engine, energy, and space. The engine is very simple, it will be there. Uh, the idea is to put one working here, and at the end of these three days, it's going to be open to the public. That is a fact. No? I cannot deny it, it will be there. Energy is very simple, I can measure it very well. But space, this is an opinion, that's a model. I'm going to use uh, the famous scientific method in this talk, or the empirical method, where we learn from facts, from experiments, they're very important. All the models are based on this. And the first thought, this is new using verba, is when you go to London, to the Royal Society, you see on the door there with the winter. Don't take it, don't take it, the word of others. Facts are important. Yeah? Not what I'm saying, but pay attention in the experiment, in the facts. Good. That is not a new idea to have a machine taking energy from the medium, as described by the great Tesla already in the beginning of the 20th century. Something, a prime mover, like a living being, taking energy from the ambient. This is the only good way to take energy. And there is something going on. In 1973, I read, also the great scientific writer, uh, Sir Arthur Clarke, was saying, in 73, when the price of oil started to become very expensive, they say, okay, it's finished the era of cheap power. And unfortunately, the era of free energy is 50 years ahead. He forecasted. it. And in 2000, Arthur Clarke was already saying, yeah, now that getting oil even more expensive, it's time to come. I hope so. Today, thus it was 73, next two years, 2023, just 50 years, we are just in time to fulfill this prophecy. Even more because energy now is not only expensive, but it's a weapon. Because it's becoming time. I think it's the moment. He was right. Does my talk, I'll take the time, if you don't mind, to put this slowly, without a high tempo, because uh, we have the afternoon, sorry for that. But at first I start with the invention yeah, at work, my experience with this invention at work. Then I give you a model of the energy source based on this experience, why I went to this way. And then I'll make a model of the invention. How is it possible to use this energy source? Very provocative. But let's put, I'll repeat here finally, experiments are the scientific 
truth. Events that happen every day, and you cannot repeat them, we normally call them miracles. When you start repeating the experiments, especially by independent people, they become facts. They become what we call experiments in the sense that can be reproduced. And that is the basis of the scientific method. You learn from them. We call them non the scientific. I prefer, sometimes I, I do not like so much to say scientific method. It's too arrogant. I like the empirical method, that's the modern name. Now, you learn from the facts. So an experiment gives the base to make a model, and then with the model you make a forecasting. With the, you try to measure it. If this forecasting going well, you improve the model by the experiments you are doing, and so on and so on. But it's never finished the model. Don't forget it. It's always, if there is an experiment a little bit different from what you expect from the model, you have to change the model, not the experiment. And it's nice because the machines of you this, they say they are made of permanent magnets, aluminum, plastic. That is it. Those, he's going to show the fact by opening this machine. Those, you cannot deny it. Thus, then I have to look for a model to explain it. An inventor has never the obligation to explain his invention. He has the obligation to show it working. We, the other ones trained, has the obligation to try to explain it, to give a direction for further research. But don't ask the inventor how he invented. Don't ask Mozart how they compose the music. He just make the music. Yeah? It's the way, it's a talent. Yeah? Now, that is my first contact in 2005 here in Izmir. When I came, why I came is another story, otherwise I'll be up to tomorrow talking here. But uh, I want to say some words about this because Bullendag was there also, was talk <laughs> by coincidence. He came especially to finalize the cycle. Um, I just make a joke with this, this, this date before going to start my measurement. I said, no, goodness, I see so many boxes, wires whatsoever. But same now, today, if you have inside this box a hidden battery of air compressed air, springs whatsoever, because I'm going to start my measurements. I brought uh, this measurement instrument you see on the table, I brought with me in the luggage to do it. And then uh, after measuring, if it goes well, we are going to proceed. And we go, you have to repeat them one day, not today, you do not need today to open it, but one day you have to open your boxes. And if you have there inside something hidden, like the batteries and so on, two things are going to, to happen the day you open it. I'll be there, I hope so. Two things. I'll have a very funny, nice weekend in this year, and you go to jail. But say it now. No, it's magnet, and so on, and so on, and so on. Indeed, a certain moment, I, uh, by making the measurement, make my calculations in between, I noticed something. Well, I cannot restart the experiment from taking a small from a battery. Very fast, more than less than three seconds. And after half an hour, I mean, my goodness, he never, because he was giving 30 watt all the time. Let's try, let's think, let's make a model, let's accept the word first of the event. What could be inside that's not a battery, a compressed air? And then there was a strange moment. And then I put a question to Mohamed. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, because it's not from this battery, according to the measurement. I asked him then, do you have a pyramid inside. <coughs> the talks, they don't want to look at me, they want to translate this way, yes, ask him. But they have, why? They okay. Why the pyramid? Because this is a very old human dream that you can interfere in the flow of energy by geometric structures. That is very old, thousand years old. The, the pyramids are there, the Egyptians tell you, ah, if you have a body there, dead body there. We take longer for putrefaction if it's outside. Okay, you there are people experiment with Freud at home, bananas on the pyramids. Huh? Those, they think that geometry interferes in the flow. Well, 
Okay. In this room, if a Chinese person would be here, they say, mm, the door is not the good place, the window is not good place. The Feng Shui, the position of the structures interfere in the well-being. Well huh? In my country, in Brazil, the healing people with crystals, just the geometries, and in Europe, the, the witch with the, the Harry Potters with the sticks, concentrated. This is a dream moment. Do you have or not a pyramid? He looked at me and he got out of the room and come back with drawings and open it. And I saw indeed a cone that's a rotating pyramid with my But that was not the most important. The important that I see on all the structures that is we call the homopolar machines. That is the second part of an experiment of Faraday in 1832. The first part is a pillar of civilization, the invention of the electric machine. The second part, I don't want to too much in the detail, is not well explained up to today. It is the combination then, of the machine with the field created by the magnet. And then um, I say, my goodness, an inventor, an ex-police officer, showing me homopolar machines, responded me in a question who never could expect from me there is something there, clearly. I say, don't, don't show me inside, show to the one that going to invest it. That for me, it's not necessary anymore. I know you have something very special in 2005. And I say to him also, to be complete, I'm not astonished with the invention. I'm very astonished who invented you. That is nice. Good. Then I keep going with the presentations like this of today. That was the second one in Germany in October. Again, you can see the light there. I try to explain to the 200 people there. My goodness. And then uh, we are looking for someone who wants to do tests to have the possibility to ask a patent for this. He could pay all the hours of test if they want in the institute. They pay everything, the hour people to work on it. It's a move they should not open. They can test what they want, but not open it, because otherwise you have no patent. But he has a condition. I need a report with your signature and a stamp from the institute. <coughs> yeah, yeah, and that start my problems, because uh, <laughs> they, there was an issue uh, in young, oh, it's the young engineers, they want to do this, and they promise to try to arrange in a famous institute in Germany. And then, uh, a few weeks later, they come to my office in the evening in Eindhoven and they say, George, I, we cannot do the, the, there was the idea huh, to make the test. I cannot do the test anymore there in this institute. And they show me the fax from the director. Simply it was said in the fax, yeah, we do not measure things we don't know. We only measure things we know. Now, and the goals. That was, this machine was 1.0. This one is the 2.0, because I said, Mommy, please, with so many box wires, every time people look, it's a battery inside, it's evident. Cannot, can you not make one without the wires in the box? Oh, yeah, that was 2.0. This machine, it can start, but it cannot stop. <laughs> if it works... <laughs> Okay, you see people look inside with lamps and something. They could not stop at all. This. Can I turn? Yeah. You cannot stop at all this machine. But it was very funny because I repeat this a few times. This is a room for marriage in, uh, in Germany. And uh, you see the rose colors, everything. But nobody, after three, four hours in the room, talk, explain, talk, and try. And then when I get out of the room with the machine working, no one asked me why he could go like this. No, a way like that. Yeah, because he, to stop, it's too hard. To stop, I have to open everything. The version 2.0. If it's disturbing me, the sign please make it so hard. And that is the version 3.0. This one. You see, we are measuring the power. I measure myself for a few hours. Yes, yes, yes. This is not the dynamo of the Audi 
on the heat around 250 watts. This should not happen according to the theory. Yeah? Thank you. This, that is the version 3.0. And this one was 2000. Thank you. I could have. Okay. Is it going well for you? Because you have to get used to my pronunciation. Sorry? I have to take louder. My goodness. I'm the one using here heads. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> anyway, 250 watt. It was 2008. And then uh, I repeat, not me, we repeated two years later at the University in Delft, this one. The same. And the cylinders there, just for the show, just to take the time, because one important part is to show it working longer, then you have to entertain the public. So I put a cylinder there, measure the flow of air, measure the flow velocity, then I calculate the power getting to the motor, and this was blowing everything around. And there are many specialists as a method machine. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not from yesterday, I have prepared this. Mm. But this blowing, they are specialists behind there. Professor Ferreira, the Donga, uh, and so on. Um, and when we open it, after, uh, I don't remember exact two hours, three, there were these, they, the public asked to stop, huh? not him. The public asked to stop, to open it. We could be there all the evening if they want. Then he opened. Take one by one. I have thoughts, but all the time. One by one and given to the audience. Except three pieces for the pattern they get. Below. But you saw more than 80%. If you are a specialist in machine, you have some expectations how to, what should be inside. Crazy. <laughs> Taking hand, no, no. No idea how could it be. Yeah? Yeah, there was many witnesses in the room to confirm it. But it was nice for me, in my side, because at this moment on, there was silence. Up to there, well, you can imagine how I look, how I look to my glasses and the other look to me, talking about a taboo, yeah? something that should not exist in the, according to the standard model. Yeah? But this works. Because let's sum, uh, and now today, I need to make a photograph of this thread to the story, because uh, it's time to finalize it. Let's see. I've summarized the invention. Nothing <coughs> comes from nothing, nihilo, nihilo, and nothing can become nothing. Somewhere this energy is coming from. Yeah? And then always answer. And talk, it still works. The first one I took from Voltaire, it's in his dictionary philosophic, that is. 18th century, but he took from the old Greeks. And the second one is 17th century, Galileo, when he's trying to explain that there is something moving in the firmament and people do not want to look at. It works. It just works. Yeah? Let's see the next part. What could be this energy source? Yeah? What you see there are photographs with magnetic viewing paper when you put in front of these machines when they are wrong. You see this picture of the magnetic field. This viewing paper, so when the magnetic field B uh, comes through it, it's a color, it's tangential, it's another color. It's only a bare idea of the magnetic field. But it's the instrument the inventor has to have an idea. That is Medusa. I was petrified when I looked at this. I cannot abandon it anymore. <laughs> it's very interesting. Just to start making a model, I have to talk about energy and space. It is important. I just ask to someone outside, what is energy? What is, everybody has the mouth full of this word. And I always ask at the start of my conversation, what do you mean by energy? Because 
When you put an adjective, for example, kinetic energy, you have mechanic energy, chemical energy, but kinetic energy is a car with a mass of speed, speed square, with the mass multiplied, divided by two kilowatt hours or joules. That is very concrete. But then you have a problem. It has to come from somewhere, and when the car stops, it goes to somewhere, that energy. It never disappears anymore. Yeah? Because energy with an adjective is very concrete. Without adjective, if you think now, you heard perhaps at secondary school, yeah, it's a property to produce work, to do our bed. But then I say, no, 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 no. Work is a 19th century word for energy. Because so you are using a circular definition. It doesn't work back then. <laughs> now, um, I'll introduce now, I'll keep repeating from now on this idea. The universe, the cosmos, as we understand it today, according to the standard model, the universe is made of, the bricks are particles, space, and time. Space is not in between your ears, is a very concrete material from the universe. I'm going to see it more. And in space and time are related. Very simple. For, I do not want to talk too much about time. I call more space time, but if distance divided by time is velocity, d divided by t is velocity, and there is a limited speed in the universe, the c, some celeritas, the speed of light, in every reference is always the same. This it's a constant, because d divided by t, distance divided by time, is related. So simple, can start to imagine this. They are not independent. Say that space and time are not integrated, is look the world as flat. Yes, it works like that in the, world, in the flat world, but this world is not flat. There are more things. Good. Does this interaction between particles, you have particles with mass, proton, electrons, and they never can reach the speed of light. There is explosion. And particles without mass, the photons, and so on. It's a zoological garden in physics. But photons have no mass, and they travel in the speed of light. That's the main difference. But the interaction between particles among each other and the space and time, we call fields. That is magnetic field, electric field, potential field, gravitational field, yeah? And the currency used in this interaction we call energy. It's like money. Very abstract when you name it without adjective. But when it's concrete, with adjective, it will never disappear. Energy is a constant in the universe. It will never create, it will never let it disappear. Yeah, it just transfers from one shape to the other. Does we get now the good definition of energy I have found? Of course, it's a crazy, po pre romantic poet in England, Blake. It's just eternal delight without adjective, yeah? Forever. Now, we know that energy is quantized, it's not something continuous. Yeah? They are drops of energy. Never, uh, when you go looking, at the last will be. Quanta, the particles, drops of energy, yeah? like raindrops, but together it looks continuous. Matter and electromagnetic waves is the energy wave. We are using energy nowadays this way, yeah? destroying, burning matter, they think, or through electromagnetic waves coming from the sun, just like that. And this energy in coherent, is a coherent pattern, not in chaotic form, yeah? it's coherent. And it's interesting that the, um, the separation there from fermions and bosons is according to mass, no mass, and so on. No. You can name a, a particle, the physical fiber for you, then, in general. But the most important is this 95% of the universe is not well understood yet. Only 6%. If you use matter in electromagnetic waves, you cannot explain the expansion of the galacticas. Yeah? That physics cannot negate black energy, dark energy, as well. Thus, we are missing things. It's not five percent. Thus, just accept that nothing is known. To say that machine is fake is a little bit arrogant. You have experiments. 
If we don't understand, we're going to look for something else to explain it. But we cannot deny the experiment. That is what's happening all the time, not only with you, this, with many other inventors. It's a taboo to talk about this. But I just go further with the thoughts a little bit. He has no mass, no charge, but he has energy, has frequency, has wavelength. Don't you say to a physicist, I don't know if I have physicists in the room, because I like to bash them, that what is the photon, particle of light? The, the answer I always get is, a photon is a photon is a photon. They don't know. They don't measure it. They can measure the experiments, impact of the photos of something. But what is really it? It does not exist, this kind of questions. Yeah? Ah, moment. And that is the first time we get space and time together. Let's look what is this space. That in this graphic, you have a proton fixed in a certain point. You'll see this line, vertical line. It does not change in space, and it's there in st stable in time. And you have these waves, these are the photons, in between electrons and the protons, keeping the electrons and the photons not clashing to each other. The proton is positive charge, electrons negative charge, they should attract, they attract. Why they do not clash? There's a question almost, there is no student at secondary school asking this when they learn about protons. Why we are here? We are made of protons and electrons, why we do not clash? Just the mother, the ocean is full of photons, the space. And when the electron goes, I don't know, I always say, the farm in the center of the United States is a good, the farm in this dimension and the electrons in this proportion are on the borders. That is the more or less, if the proton will be so big at the farm, the electron will be somewhere there. Indeed, he jumped, when he got photons, he's trying to dance outside the borders in more energy. He lose energy, he get inside again. And they jump in, this, in the swimming pool the black sea of Andira. It goes to the proton, but then he fetch photons from the space and they put it back. They cannot reach them anymore. It's a lot of energy. Because we are here because of the space. That is it. That is this just mainstream. Because, and they interfere with each other. The, pro the photons and the particles around each other. And there is something strange there. A small circle, see, with the, this is more circle is this. When you look in the laboratory, there is a special camera to photograph charge and presence of charge. When you have in the point A, if you see well, a photo in high and, uh, density of energy, it splits in matter and antimatter, in positive and negative charge. It becomes from photon to mass. You see that then you get the circles. And they clash with the other again, it becomes photon again. Because this cooking is everywhere, now here, we have this. Always getting the exchange of the energy does not lose, it's lost at all. It gets matter, it gets photon, it gets matter. This happens all the time. This is the space and time. No? Now, and that is Einstein come and then it makes very clear. Because the first sentence that is on a 17th century, this guy say, we suppose the space empty. We suppose that they think he's in. He was looking for something more. And I say, no, no, space is curved. It's measured. In the eclipse, you have this, where the sun, a big mass, the space around it is not flat. It's curved. Because you can see this there behind the sun. Light gives this. How can be something empty and curved? No, no. Think about the photon, the chaos of energy around it. Yeah? That is related. That is 1915. Then from this moment, it's better to find space-time. And then you have four dimensions. You have the A, X, Y, Z, this three-dimensional, and time. They are together in the equation from 1915 on. <laughs> Now, let's find out. I take a long time, it goes faster now. So, let's accept it. What we call vacuum is full, not empty. Yeah? 
Those the fields are quantized, yeah, and they have fluctuations, vibrations in the space time all the time. That's everything. If we eliminate the matter and waves, uh, let me have it, the perfect vacuum, they'll say, no, it's still yeah, zero temperature, nothing moving anymore, still are fluctuations there. And then implicitly the space has the same properties as the, the particles. They have spin, have energy, and so on and so on. The only point is it's extremely chaotic. It's so strong, so chaotic that looks nothing. You think it's supposedly, you think it's nothing. No, it's a lot. It's just nothing, nothing, nothing becomes nothing. There is a lot of energy in the vacuum of in the space. How you want to name it? In the 19th century, they call about ether. And ether gets another name that is just come back from 1915 when you have curved. Now, that was the source of energy. Everywhere, whatsoever, this machine works below the ground, in the sky, uh, everywhere. You have space time. Does you have energy? Just chaotic. Yeah, by the way, there, there's always um, the ancestors had a feeling for these things. You never, uh, so, uh, it was dark, came light. Chaos, came coherence. Leviathan, the monster, the chaos, and make life. All the cultures, all the cultures are talking this. In another words, of course. Yeah? But now the conversion, that's important. At this, you, I don't like beautiful pictures because it killed the imagine of my students anyway. If I put now a beautiful picture here to explain my idea, you have, it's killed. You have no space to think. But I'm proposing to imagine in this room a permanent, a, a bar of iron here, yeah, on the ceiling, and I have a bar of permanent magnet in my hands with springs, no? springs with force. I put, and then I get, I put the magnet direct on the bar, the iron, it attracts, but the spring will keep them attracted. This is in floating here, kept by the spring. You see this is in the air, like that. Forces on the magnet, the iron bar, and then is my question, how long this bar will be there? Hmm? How long the magnets will be in your refrigerator? How it works? Is this an energetic process? Is energy involved here? Because if uh, yes, you see the confrontation, how can I keep the magnet feeling from here a piece of iron on the corner of this room? What is going from here to there? We have to understand it to understand these machines. Now, let's put a model of the magnet. Internally in the permanent magnet, to the left you see a bar, it's a grid yeah, with the protons, the positive charge, and around it electrons dancing, dancing circulation, you have magnetic momentum everywhere. This dancing is very special, only magnets for one big reason, they are synchronized. They do not clash to each other. The electrons do not share the same at the same time. They dance. Those, they take the chaotic photons from space. When they dance, they abandon them in a pattern because of this disposition. Those, I create the magnetic field around the bar in the space with a circular pattern. We can feel it and measure it. And it goes to the corner, to the end of the thing. And the other one, electrons in the iron feel this pattern and it started dancing the same way. The soft iron obeys it. There is interaction. Force is brought from here, the magnet, to there, to space. It is not empty. Yeah? There is physical things there. If you are set on average, it's zero. The energy exchange, what you take from the chaos, you make the pattern and far away it gets again chaotic, less and less. Thus it flows from chaos to chorus and gets back to the big ocean. Yeah? That is set a magnet. It's very special. It's the only element in nature in this room temperature. It's like 
uh, circulation of a current without resistance. And copper is not like that. Aluminum is not like that. They have interactions. Okay, that is the basis. Magnets are in a state to create a coherent pattern of energy from the chaotic energy in space time. It's so simple. Anyway, it is mainstream this. That's a way of looking to these things. Yeah, now the... How can now the machines with a geometric structure put it to work? That's just for the show. That is not... In, uh, when you work with electricity, it's really life dangerous, huh? If I, in my laboratories, and you have to walk around with your hands in the pockets. If you touch things, you are dead. But we know how to handle it. And let us see, you do not see, you do not feel like that, but it's strong, it's very heavy. Yeah? So this is helps to have an idea. I just have this uh, thing from the internet, just to have an idea. You interfere. That's enough. With current around to change a little bit the pattern. No? Now, Let's accept that the magnets, is a, they do something with space that was a man. That's not the important part. I took this uh, Dutch uh, thing saying so, the scientist said to that, very impressive, my friend, but does it work in theory? Can you imagine? <laughs> it works. Does it work in theory? That is the most difficult part of the game. And I'm not, I say to them, I'm not a missionary. I am a messenger. I never try to convince. These acquisitions... Yeah. Now, to put my model now, I have to use a few thoughts from the past. Fourier is, was a general of Napoleon, but is known nowadays not as being general, he's a mathematician with his techniques. And uh, he's just saying, it's very important, natural philosophy from him uh, was a subject those days, not ethical physics, but by observation. Huh? And the causes are not known, but by observation we can discover laws, things to help design. Yeah? We're going to use this, yeah? by observation of how is this built, how it works, I can have directions for designers. No. The second one, a very important one, if in this room, that is from Galileo again, no? the opinion yeah, of the authority of thousand experts is nothing in face of the scientific method. You have the right to have your opinion. Just do it, especially young people, do it. Propose a model, the experiment confirm it, and then propose the next one. Don't take the word of the others. Nullius in verba. The authority is the fact, not the opinion. We are doing the empirical method, some successful method for more than 400 years. Eh? Don't forget, the empirical method never gives us the moral direction. Eh? It's only direction to improve things. The moral direction comes from another place, not from science. It's very important to separate the two ideas. Eh? Okay. And finally, I'm an engineer. Our models are really wrong, but a few ones are very handy. That's the case. You can use them to build bridges, to make machines. Just taking the freedom gave you by these three thoughts, just I have a proposition. Then I say, okay, let's start looking this machine's work. Let's look in the standard electrodynamics. That is Griffin's is perhaps the best book consider the best book in classical electromagnetism, in the electrodynamics, is considered. <coughs> then he's saying, this is a beautiful, complete and successful theory, an example for others. And then you say this to young students. But in this sentence, I will do a little dramatic now, it's a crime against science. There is a very bad word in it. He's saying that the theory is complete. Just nobody's going to try this machine if you read the book first, because it's not there. If you to do this book, it's not possible. A theory is never complete. Theory is to put light on something. Huh? 
a little bit experience, a little bit different is enough to make, to change the theory, not experiment. The authority is given by the experiment. Say that it is finished, it's not according to the original idea of the empirical method. Should be, if this word complete was not there, it's perfect. It's a beautiful and successful theory, indeed, but it's not complete. Simply because the word of electromagnetism according in the Latin elements is a flat, it's a just flat word, not even curved. Now, in the book's note, then I took, I'm looking around, the standard models say, cannot explain it, but I look another theory. This one is the from Einstein, Cartan, and Evans, is a new one, not so old. The, the, invent, the writer, Mr. Evans, unfortunately, is just deceased in 2019. But he left behind the theory, there are others. This is not fully under, uh, accepted yet. There is a fight between the standard model and these things. But it makes the idea is that Cartan was a mathematician and uh, a French one. In the 20s, he wrote, after Einstein proposed the general relativity, curved theory, Cartan proposed, no, let's accept that space is not only curved, if you accept, suppose every point in space, let's put a tangent at every point here, huh? if it's not only curved, but having torsion, you can combine electromagnetism and gravitation. It's possible, but it's a heavy mathematics thing to go further. Yeah, indeed, then I follow the rules, I put this together, I took the time to read this here, and I wrote a paper, a recent paper, this there, trying to analyze other patents, not from you this, first has to finalize this, from the past. And you see that I can apply in this paper, the is a theory, to show the entering, the, uh, where the gate of energy is coming from, from space time, naturally, according to this theory. Okay. In summary, universe is made of particles in space-time, vacuum is not nothing, yeah? and it seems we have geometric structures with permanent magnets being able to get an energy flow from space-time and put to work in these inventions. I'm not trying to say that matter is becoming energy, that is atomic nuclear reactions, no, they are still alive. There was no nuclear relation in the 20 years in the room, at, at the home at the moment, you know? People are not getting ill. That this is the most evident guess for this proposition, yeah? Then I get back to the beginning of the presentation. The three words are back there, engine, energy, and space. I gave the argument, and I got to my conclusion. You notice? <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah, that is the Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the force is with us. Okay? Good. I wish, really wish, that this time there will be a sequence. It's time for these inventions. Yeah? Perhaps will be a, a possibility nowadays. 20 years ago was impossible. Now it's time. I really think. Okay. Thank you very much. If you <laughs>